Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Razan Al Hassan. I'm a second year medical student. Inshallah, for today, I'll be explaining uh, the innervation of the thoracic viscera. Uh, inshallah, yani, this topic won't take us a uh, long time. Uh, yani, it's a very easy lecture. And um, you have just like buzzwords. I highlighted them for you, uh, which will help you, inshallah, solving the questions, inshallah. Uh, here is my contact information. In case you need to contact me, please feel free to do that in case you have any questions. And while I'm explaining, if you didn't understand anything, feel free to interrupt me. Okay, so here are our objectives for today. Uh, we will going, we're going to end, inshallah, by practice questions and some tips for final exam. So the first thing to start with, we, if we classify the uh, nervous system by structure and by function. Okay, so structurally, we classify it as central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous, ner uh, central nervous system is further divided into the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, and the peripheral nervous system is divided into uh, 12 pairs of the cranial nerves, uh, which you took them in your foundation block. And it's divided also into 31 pairs of the spinal nerves and ganglia, uh, yani the associated ganglia. Then you have here the functional classification of the nervous system, which is divided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. The somatic one is con voluntary control, and yani things you con you can control, yani, uh, voluntary, you, co you control it by yourself, uh, such as the skeletal muscles and the skin. I'll be uh, explaining this in a while in the in next couple of slides, the general somato efferent and the general somato afferent. For the autonomic nervous system is the involuntary control, such as the smooth muscles and the glands. Okay, both of them, the smooth muscles and the glands are regulated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic. You might come across uh, the enteric nervous system, which is uh, uh, another division for the autonomic nervous system. But the enteric, inshallah, you will be uh, covering it in your block uh, next semester, GI. Here, we need to know what are neurons. Neurons, you need to know that they are the functional unit of nervous system. They consist of the nerve cells, which are the, the, I mean, they are the neurons themselves, and their processes. What are these processes? They are the dendrites and the axons, okay? Something to help you uh, know why, like, uh, which is short and which is long. Like, see, dendrites is a long word, and here, like, just know it's long. It, the, the opposite of, of this long word, it should be short, okay? So these are the short processes which are here. Axons, they are the, uh, like it looks like a short word, so it's long processes, which is here, from here, and it ends by the axon terminals. At the end of the axon, you find the axon terminals, okay? We need also to classify these neurons, like we don't have only one type, we have three types of neurons. We have unipolar, so also we call it pseudo-unipolar neurons. This is very important things, like the highlighted things are very important. Their function is sensory and their location is in the dorsal root ganglia. Why did we name it like pseudo-unipolar, not just like unipolar and we are done? Pseudo because like, see, this is the cell body and it divides here, it gives the axon, but again, it divides and give another two branches. So we gave it the name pseudo-unipolar. Their, their location again in the dorsal root ganglia. Keep this in mind. And bipolar neurons, they are not much, but uh, they are found in the retina of the eye and ganglion of hearing and balance. Now, I just mentioned this for the sake of completion, but they don't ask about it really. The multipolar neurons, they are the most common type in the CNS and PSNS, uh, P, uh, PNS, sorry. So you need to know this very well, and it's like the locations are really important. So is everyone good with the last part I'm done with? Or any questions, or do you need me to repeat anything before I start here? Feel free to type in the chat or unmute yourself. I think I can take that as a yes. No one is responding. Okay. So the center, the again, the nervous system is somatic and autonomic. This is the division. 
can anyone tell me what type of division did we set this? Any the nervous system? Is it uh, is it structural or functional? Okay, it's fine, no worries. This is a functional division, okay? Functional division, which is, we said, somatic and autonomic. The somatic is skeletal muscle, we said, and skin. So skeletal muscle, we give it another name. We give it the name somatomotor, okay? And also, uh, it's, it, it's named as general somatoefferent. The skin, we give it the name as somatosensory. Also, we give it the, another name as general somato af. Okay, um, this type of neuron is a multipolar neuron. Okay, why? Because it's the one which I showed previous. Uh, here it's just the cell body, and here is the uh, dendrites, and here is the axon. And here, as I mentioned, this is the uh, pseudo unipolar neuron. It always settled down in the dorsal root ganglion. This is very important again. It starts from the skin, okay? That's why it's afferent. I'm going to explain this in another visual, visualizing way. Uh, let's imagine that this is hot water, okay? So if I touch the water, I'm feeling that it's hot. So I need to remove my hand. How would that occur? Like there are receptors on my skin. These, uh, the receptors are going to send signals from here. The receptors are here and the signals travel all the way uh, through the dorsal ramus, dorsal primary ramus, and ventral primary ramus. They travel all the, uh, all the way here in the spinal and come, uh, like they meet in the spinal nerve, okay? And they go all the way to the uh, cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. Again, these signals reach the spinal cord at the dorsal horn, okay? They reach where? The dorsal horn. Then these signals, still my, my finger is here, all this process, my finger is here, okay? Then these signals are relayed to the uh, ventral horn here, where the, som where the somatomotor efferent neurons are located in the ventral horn by the accessory processes, okay? So the signals come here and they travel all the way from the ventral horn to, through the uh, ventral root, spinal nerve, and again, into the dorsal ra primary ramus and the ventral primary ramus, leading to the muscle contraction, and I'm going to remove my finger. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. Let's proceed. Uh, then we do have the autonomic nervous system, which we said it's glands and smooth muscles. They are both, regu both regulated by sympathetic and parasympathetic. You can look and see here that they have two neurons instead of one. Like here in the somatic one, we just have one neuron, one here and one here, one for each. And here we do have two. We do have the pre one, which starts from the CNS, and the post start, uh, ends at, in the organ, okay? Where do they both meet? They meet in the ganglion. So the, the signals from the pre-ganglionic uh, pre neuron is relayed to the post-ganglionic neuron via the ganglion. They reach, they sign up in the ganglion this way, and it gives the signals to the uh, other neuron. Uh, here is a mnemonic to help you remember. Uh, when they say sensory neurons for this one, when they say sensory, you have to know that it's afferent. Afferent means yani, it starts. It's the way it's the way that it enters. Where does it enter? The signals from the afferent. If they said motor, it's efferent. Like efferent, they just exit. The signals exit from the motor. Again, if they mentioned dorsal, either dorsal root ganglion or they mentioned the dorsal horn, also you should know that these neurons are afferent neurons. If they mentioned that it's ventral, just know that it's efferent. Different, they are exiting. These signals are exiting. Okay. Here, what's what's important in this picture, and you don't, you don't have to bother yourself with 
many many stuff. Like the important thing is the purple uh, neuron and the light blue neuron. The purple neuron is found in the lateral horn uh, of the spinal cord, which is going, which is the sympathetic neuron. It's going to travel all the way in the ventral horn, sorry, ventral root, okay? And it's going to come to the spinal nerve. And again, it comes here through the white communicant ramus to the sympathetic trunk, okay? The sympathetic trunk is the place where the uh, preganglionic neurons and the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic division are going to meet. Then this is the post uh, ganglionic neuron, which is going to innervate our uh, visceral organ, either the heart or the lung, like for instance, like this is, uh, which is your block all about. Then again, you can see here that this uh, post ganglionic neuron is going again back and, and appearing here in the um, spinal uh, nerve. It goes here back via the uh, gray communicant ramus and coming here in the uh, spinal nerve and again appearing here in this places, which is the dorsal and ventral primary ramus. Why they are coming here? The sympathetic uh, uh, innervation is going to innervate just one type of gland, which is the sweat gland. This is the only type of gland it's uh, innervated by, by the sympathetic uh, division. And also we have the, uh, the uh, blood vessels and other uh, smooth muscles, okay? Here again, we have here this, the light blue, uh, the light blue uh, neuron, which is found in the dorsal root ganglia. You have the referred pain. In case there is any pain, uh, there is any issue with any internal organ, this uh, issue will appear as referred pain. How does this pain appear? Here, the pain from the, this is our visceral organ. This uh, neuron is traveling from the visceral organ through the uh, sympathetic trunk, uh, all the way along the white communicant ramus, going through the, uh, the spinal nerve and going here to the uh, uh, dorsal root ganglion and reaching the uh, uh, sympathetic, uh, sympathetic cell bodies in the uh, lateral horn, okay? The pain appear appear uh, appear as uh, referred referred pain because both new both the somatic and the visceral one are uh, activated. Does the pain appear like dull pain? You cannot localize it specifically. Where does the pain pain appears? That's why it's called referred pain because it's dull pain, not very specific. These are the key labels for the previous diagram. Uh, here. I need you to remember that both SNS and PSNS has afferent and efferent fibers. So SNS, which is sympathetic nervous system, is for fight and flight. In fight, during fight and flight, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure increases because you are just feeling, feeling like you're frightened or you need to do something stressed or so on and so forth. Okay, And also uh, the redistribu uh, redistribution of the blood to the brain, heart, and skeletal muscles. And also it inhibits peristalsis of the intestinal tract and close the sphincters. Like when you're stressed and uh, you're in a fight and flight state, you don't wanna eat. So there is no intestinal movements because you're not eating, okay? And your sphincters, the upper and the lower, lower uh, sphincters of the esophagus are tightly closed because there is no food. The opposite uh, appear here, here in the uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system which your chill, rest, and digest, slow heart rate, decreased blood pressure, increased peristalsis, which is the movement of the intestinal tract, and the uh, your uh, sphincters are open. Okay. Here, the highlighted words are your keywords for solving the questions. Sympathetic, which is fight and flight. The preganglionic neurons, as I mentioned now, they are found in the lateral horn. Lateral horn nucleus, okay, specifically the lateral horn in the spinal uh, spinal cord and the nucleus in that lateral horn is known as intermedial lateral, okay. The segments generally, we speak generally, not specifically for the thorax, the uh, spinal segments are T1 to L2, okay, but specifically if we want them for the thoracic uh, cavity, it's T1 to T4. 
Okay. For the preganglionic fibers, we said that they need to synapse so they can relay the information to the uh, postganglionic neurons. Okay. Where do they synapse? They synapse in the ganglia. There is a specific name for this ganglia known as the sympathetic trunk. Okay. Then the post neuro the post ganglionic neurons, uh, specifically for the sympathetic neurons, they have a specific name which is known as the thoracic splachnic neurons. Okay. And they uh, just end uh, in the organ and they innervate it. Uh, we have here some examples like where these postganglionic neurons can end. They end in the uh, uh, SA node and the AV node, also in the cardiac muscle fibers and the coronary, coronary arteries. We said then here with the, uh, it's written that the activation results in increased heart rate and force of contraction. Okay, so as we said, this is fight and flight. So person would be like. Um, fearing afraid or stressed or anything of these conditions, heart rate will be increased and for the contraction will be very rapid and it will lead to dilation of coronary arteries. Why here specifically dilation? Does anyone know? Okay, so specifically dilation because the heart is pumping rapidly and we need blood to reach to the heart. So that's why here coronary arteries need to dilate. Here, the specifically um, opposite things uh, in the PSNS. So cell bodies of the preganglionic neurons are located in the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus nerve. Specifically because, um, why in the vagus nerve? Because the, uh, the uh, parasympathetic uh, starts from uh, cranial. We have the cranial sacral. Okay, the segment sp segments from the spinal cord are the sacral, and we have the cranial uh, nerves which are involved. Okay, specifically, we mentioned vagus nerve, so that's why it's written in the cerebral medulla because they are cranial nerves. The nucleus is found in the uh, in the vagus. Preganglionic fibers they need also to join, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the post. Uh, uh, ganglionic neurons, which are found in the terminal ganglia. Where to, to find this terminal ganglia? We find it just in the organ, not like the uh, uh, SNS. We find it there, and the postganglionic just innervate directly the organ. Yani the terminal ganglia is in the organ. Let's say this is the organ. This is the terminal ganglion. The 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 pre gang the pre uh, what it's called? the uh, the pre gang the pre neurons preganglionic neurons are coming here. They, uh, they meet uh, the post-ganglionic the post at the terminal ganglion, okay? And then they do their action. They, they again terminate in the SA node, AV node, and coronary arteries. They activate, they, when they, we activate the PSNS, it leads to decreased heart rate and force of contraction and lead to constriction of coronary arteries because here heart rate is kind of normal, so we don't need much blood to flow here. Is it clear? Okay, we can move on. Now we are done with the lecture. We have here an important summary, which is the artery and the parasympathetic innervation. Uh, parasympathetic innervation, we mentioned that it's found in the dorsal uh, motor neuron, dorsal uh, motor neuron of the vagus. So it's the cranial nerve number 10. Where does it terminate? In the terminal ganglia, which is found, found in the organ. Par sympathetic innervation, the preganglionic neurons are found where? On the lateral in the spinal cord. Specifically, the name of the nucleus is intermediolateral. The, th the segments of the spinal cord is T1 to T4. And the postganglionic uh, are found in the sympathetic trunk of uh, the uh, segments T1 to T4. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, to name the postganglionic neurons as thoracic splachnic neurons. Okay. 
For sensory innervation, the referred pain, as I mentioned, the neurons are found where? In the dorsal root ganglia, also for T1 to T4. To T4. So uh, as an example here, the referred pain uh, on the left arm is for myocardial infarction. This is a side note where I found it in the questions, practice questions of Dr. Olena. Uh, it said that the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve, and the phrenic nerve consists of general somatoafferent and general somatoephrin. Are we all good until now? Or do I need to repeat anything? Okay, all clear. Thank you, Judy, for... Okay, now we're going to the parts, part of the questions. Okay, read the question and... Let me know what do you think the answer is. Here you can see that you have a um, keyword which says preganglionic neuron neural cell bodies that increases the heart rate. Which ones increase the heart rate? It's okay if you don't know. Um, we mentioned that the location of the preganglionic neurons that increase the heart rate, this means that this is the sympathetic, sympathetic innervation. So the ones that increase the heart rate are located in the lateral in the lateral horn T1 to T4. Okay. So it's here. Here, lateral horn T1 to T4. These are the preganglionic neurons. This is the keyword here to solve the question. And also here it says increasing the heart rate. Next question. So here, what do you think the question is, is asking for? And sometimes the question would be just a long case, but you have specific keyword to answer the question. Yeah, the keyword is skeletal muscles, exactly. So what do you think would be the answer? Try and guess. So what do you think? The is it the ventral lateral? So okay, let's move on. No worries. The skeletal muscles. Okay, someone answered. Okay, it's ventral, yeah, exactly. Ventral means anterior, it's the same thing. So anterior horn and the ventral horn are the same thing. And uh, it's just different names. So if they said anterior, it's the same as ventral. If they told you posterior, it's same as dorsal. Uh, these are just different terms. Hopefully, inshallah, they won't confuse you. Here's the answer. Next question. So here they're asking about the general, yeah, okay, let me see. The general somato effort. Carry it, yeah, exactly, away from the cell bodies. Good job. Okay, last question.
What do you think about this question? They said that this patient presented with loss of sensation over the skin of the shoulder over the shoulder. The injury to the which of the uh, which of the following nerve cells would most likely affect the conduction of sensory information to the CNS? Which type of neurons we said that it's for sensation? Yeah, it's somatic, okay. So which type is for somatic? And which type is for the sensation? Let me give you a hint. It's located in the dorsal root ganglion. Okay, no worries. In the dorsal root ganglion, it's uh, pseudo-unipolar neurons. Remember these things very well uh, because they might appear exactly unipolar, yeah. So they might appear as this word, as uh, such mentioned like here, it's sensory, just without giving you a hint, like if it's in the doors or the road, or they might ask you like if it's sensory and just giving you locations. So make sure you know the things that are uh, in bold color in the slides and inshallah, you will be uh, good inshallah. So here we are done uh, with the uh, lecture. Here are some tips for your final exam. Um, so these tips include, um, for the anatomy part, uh, I would emphasize the local on the clinical aspects, which are mentioned uh, in Dr. Olenis lecture for your SAC. Please know them very well. For Dr. Aakif and Atif lectures, they are important as uh, as uh, doctors Ol Dr. Olenis lectures, but um, I don't remember they were asking a lot about them in the SAC. Yani, these things are for MCQs, okay? For Dr. Hassan's lecture, uh, I remember that we were specifically our batch we were speaking about that. We were struggling with his lectures and I have notes for that and I would uh, send it uh, to any of your colleagues in the batch and I'll let them send uh, send them on your group or either I will contact your um, BLCs. For physiology, specifically speaking for about the SAC, uh, we got this lecture, which is the cardiac output, sorry, the integrated control of CVS. This we got this picture sack from this picture, so don't skip this these pictures and say oh it's not important or we'll not get a question. Actually, we got literally this picture as a sack, so don't skip anything. Uh, cardiac cycles, cardiac cycle and PV loop. It's very very important lecture, high yield lecture, ECG and heart sound. Uh, for your batch, I think uh, this um, going to uh, uh, the final exam is going to include both cardio and uh, and. Uh, pulmonary part, since you didn't have midterm, it will be balanced, yani, inshallah. So know these things very well. And for the cardiac uh, control of cardiac output, there is a graph, which is at the end. I remember that graph. This graph is very high. You, you'll never find yani, a cardio exam without this graph, at least yani, from, from our experience. We got that graph many times. So please make sure that you know how to solve these graphs. Yani. Uh, this graph is very, very important. Then here for the pulmonary part, yani everything is important. Um, also for cardio, by the way, everything is important. But these are, these are the same things which are emphasized, which I'm emphasizing. I think they're important, yani, from my experience. Uh, one tip uh, for physio pulmo, don't link. Try to link them, yani, the pulmonary part to the cardio part, and start to say, oh, why did we do that? Uh, uh, in cardio and we didn't do that in palmo like they study them separately so you don't mix up uh, each uh, and every single information you have for the the there is a lecture this lecture is important the hypoxemia and the va and q mismatch lecture this lecture also is important and make sure that you solve dr shams questions on moodle because i remember uh, and he got us some questions kind of from them, uh, I remember in renal. In case if there is any explanation found in the uh, in the questions he have, make sure you read the explanation. Because I remember in renal he bought his um, sack question, and literally that sack question was from one of his explanation in his practice questions. So make sure you don't skip anything, and um, try to cover all the all all your lectures and solve questions from your exam committee, and inshallah you will be good. For the OSP, don't worry. Uh, I think you have it the next day after your final. Inshallah, it will be easy. Uh, cover cover your lab material, uh, solve questions on them. Uh, you can also attend the uh, mock OSP 
to make sure that you know how the OSP is going to be. Um, the OSP, I mean, it was very easy. I and mean, inshallah, it's easy marks. So don't uh, stress. And best, all the best of your luck. Uh, sorry, all the best of all the best of luck for your final. And inshallah, you got this. Uh, we are done. In case you have any question, please feel free to contact me and uh, scan this QR code um, for the feedback. You're welcome. Anytime.